inside the building. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Camp Price Moody. Yes. 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 Um, <clears throat> so the first half of the building is basically um, um, kind of like a large uh, meeting room um, with a kitchen and some um, bathrooms and a little entry hall, a pretty sizable entry hallway. But on the back side of the building is um, semi-permanent um, apartments where I believe there are caretakers who stay on the property year-round is my understanding and um, they they help run programs and they help manage the facility and kind of in exchange they they get to live there and, um, so there are people there full-time there's also a pool an in-ground pool um, I'm gonna guess to the north of the building and um, yeah it's basically used for um, getting, you know, all sorts of Girl Scouts and Girl Scout activities to, to do them in a wood setting. Mm -hmm. So, what kinds of, you said something might be built? Well, it building. could be a recreation field. Oh, uh, oh, the Girl Scouts may want to have some sort of a field out there. Uh, and if, in fact, title does end up in the town of Reading, uh, my discussion with the town manager is they may want to put an athletic field there. So the CR would not preclude that, uh, but would preclude any kind of actual development of the site. Now, are there actual resource area on the property? All I had is I went online and looked at the wetland map that the town has. Uh, it shows a green, pretty much a green area. Maybe, Chuck, do you have that? I can get it. Okay. Pretty much what area A is. Uh, is probably a buffer area of maybe 30 or 40 feet from the green area. Uh, so you, you, can, you can see what, that's what caused me to draw it that way. That was pretty upland. Uh, most of it is pretty upland, yeah. but, but down near area A is probably um, <coughs> the most lowland part of the whole parcel, the word area A. That's and interesting. So, then you can see something at so the end of the pool and the building. Can you see the, the line of uh, uh, There you go, right in the line. Didn't show up, huh? No, it's on there. It's hard to say. There it is. Yeah. It's line. So, that's what I use. Uh, if you look at the northern sector, what I marked there, I tried to go outside that. Even though the wetlands appear to be offset, I kept a bordering line around it for privacy for abutters. Um, and that pretty much is what caused me to draw the line where I did. Obviously, if there's anything out there um, that you want to take a look at and you want to have the line be different, you could certainly do that. Yeah. It might, be, it might be interesting to see how that line just in real life jives with the pool. Mm-hmm. It's very close. It's very close. Yeah. It's very tight there. <clears throat> I assume they came to you when they put the pool in. I, I was not involved. Wasn't it? Okay. But yeah, I noticed that too. It seems to skirt it right along the line. Oh, if if the concept, uh, if you feel comfortable with a conservation restriction, more or less the way I've described it, then we could certainly have <coughs> probably his engineering or someone go out there and put some demarcation so we know where it is, and then therefore have area A be an appropriate area to preserve in a natural condition while allowing, we should be referring to it. Yeah, and then allowing activity in Area B. Chuck, are we the only ones that? that have jurisdiction over conservation restrictions? Or are there? I, I just uh, I was just wondering why Concom. Mm -hmm. The the uh, I think the conservation restriction handbook suggests that the conservation commission be the policing and authority. <coughs> As far as approval goes, you have to approve it first, and the selectmen and then the state. Um, I, I, I just want to comment that in in general, I'm in in favor of conservation restrictions as a general um, thing, um, general rule. But I might. 
I don't know if it's possible to um, to walk the site um, and kind of have at least I'm not I'm not all the line sort of mm -hmm. pegged out in real space, but at least mm -hmm. loosely at so that we could go out to the field and walk the property and just see where that line really will be. Because there's a lot of mapping kind of on three sides of the property. Not only that, but even there's possibly some additional, because Rice Road and truly, even though there's right of way to continue down to the end of the property, it looks like it's actually stopped. Um, shy of that paper street so you know I don't know if you know so there might be some additional conservation along Rice Road I, I don't know I just I would, I'm just curious for what purpose to go out and walk the line but if I mean, the purpose is to, for it to be a conservation restriction there are some mapping indications that it, that this line might be an accurate representation of being protective of the resource, but there was enough um, it, that made me think. Yeah, it if you be see that that area A yep. um, towards these properties, right. there was wetland in there, and it would be a nice idea to, if if you are going to provide a buffer, then maybe you know the twenty-five foot additional. You know, we, you don't. We don't know where the wetland is, and it would be nice to have a 25 foot no disturbance uh, natural vegetation beyond right. the wetland line. I get that. So, are we asking for the, it would make more sense if we had a wetland delineation rather than just where these lines are here? I think. Didn't my, you I, my, my first question is would you support a conservation restriction if it meets your personal criteria? If it does, then we'd negate haze and they could demarket where the wetlands are, uh, at least roughly, so that we, because it's a very large land area and this is a non-profit in the sense it's not going to change anything, uh, but we have no trouble at all putting a real line there that, that protects the wetlands. Um, I just want to make sure before they incur the cost that you're prepared to see it through with us to get a conservation restriction on the land. Chuck, can you ask um, about deed restriction? versus conservation restriction, what you thought about the conservation restriction definition is? I thought there was a public uh, access uh, component to the conservation restriction. They favor it. Um, they like to have public access, but it's not necessarily a criteria. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of them, and, and that's, that is favored. Um, the state likes to see public have access. You said you talked the state, did they look at this favorably? I think they would. I had conversation with the state early on, mm -hmm. <clears throat> making sure that a recreation use could still qualify within a CR, and they said it did. You don't even have to have wetlands, really, to have a conservation restriction. That's the term, but uh, it's conserving land for, uh, for right. appropriate purposes. Right. But in this one, there are uh, wetland issues are involved as well, so I figure why not I def identify those with a tighter control and then allow further uh, recreation activity in, in the larger, larger area. <clears throat> That's uh, so the public access. I, I thought that, uh, although I can't find it, I have the uh, draft um, application here. I thought others could be, anyone in government could also be a benefactor of the conservation restriction. Actually, the benefactor is the public and be, you'd be policing it. So you'd be the grantees on the conservation restriction with the power to control it, make sure it wasn't violated. So, yeah, so that's, and that gets right back to the public. They're not really going to have access on this land, but, it, but they're the benefactor. Yeah, I think that preserving uh, areas in a recreation or open setting is sufficient public benefit in and of itself to not have to have the public going over it. A lot of them clearly, when we do them with development projects, you have trails, whether they're walking trails or whether they're horse riding trails, depending on the area, are an important component for approvals. Uh, in this case, though, the, the value is preserving this so it's not developed with more houses, you're not losing the, the habitat for, I'm sure there are plenty of uh, creatures that live out there that would be 
displaced by that or destroyed. So that is a sufficient public benefit to meet the statute. Obviously, in the CR, also you have a right to enter to inspect to make sure it's not being violated. I, I'm, I'm just, I think it's a great idea. I, you know, I'm just at area A and area B where, um, where um, no use is, is there and the other would be open space. Um, it would be better to get that more defined. I know that's as, it looks like that's as big as you could possibly possibly make it um, based on what I'm seeing on this map here. Sure. The, uh, the state will not approve it unless there's a survey plan showing it. Mm -hmm. So this is just the start. Is that, a, uh, is that something that you would, um, or the, is that something that we could change those boundary lines and try to get uh, a kind of more of an area that would be, um, uh, you know, protected in perpetuity? Sure. Sure. Yeah, this is this is just a start that I did based upon what I saw on that map. Uh, so obviously it's open to change. All that the Girl Scouts care about <clears throat> and the uh, the donors is that there's sufficient remaining area so it could be used for recreational purposes. That's that's their criteria. Any other questions from uh, members of the commission? If this was a, a conservation restriction were put placed on this area A there. Um, and the, the town trails committee wanted to put a trail in there. Would that be allowed or, or not allowed? Well, I don't think it'd be a problem with that. Area area's wetland. Yeah. A lot of it's wetland. So you could put a trail in the swamp. So that's why I asked if we could move the line to have an area next to where, you know, just upland a little bit to maybe put a trail. What's, what is, but that also could go in Area B because that could be developed for open yeah. space. So yeah, Area B is the whole thing is going to be subject to the conservation restriction, but the the restrictions would be very dependent on the area. But I don't see a problem with with the trail. Okay. Right, it would probably be a sunrise to sundown use. It wouldn't be yeah. nighttime use. Well, the only question I had if it, if that opened that Area A up to anyone to use that, you know, just you know, just thinking from you know, parents send their children to the camp that's going to be in Area B, you know, that might be something that might be something that would be a concern to parents, or just the general public walking through that area. That, that's and a good adjacent point. To the, yeah. Adjacent to that, that camp, um, you know, maybe that's something that, you know, parents that send their kids to the camp would not want. The, uh, the camp is certain, certain times of the year. Right. Uh, so maybe maybe your point is maybe snowshoeing in the winter or something of that nature would not be. Right. So if we could work through those kind of restrictions. Chuck, there are some walking paths in the wetlands south of this property between Hensie Street and Birch Meadow Drive. Don't you know we have a conservation mm -hmm. land? I just thought I'd... In that area? Yeah. On Bush Meadow Drive? You right. Get right to right between the ends of those streets and... Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember, Chuck, there were some... Um, yeah, there's, river a, crossing, there's little a boardwalk out there. Boardwalk, there's yeah. The zoom in, you can yeah. see the trail. Yep. Yeah. And I, I think my... One of my impressions is that you know a lot of kids who want to walk to the schools, <laughs> you might a couple of them might cut through the ends of those streets and mm -hmm. through those trails to get to the high school and cool engine. Um, is this uh, I is this land under any restriction now? A, um, no, there, there are no restrictions. It's privately it's held. It, it has a long-term lease. Yeah. That's a restriction. The Girl Scouts can use that, but they can own the fee as well once a deed is approved by the court. Um, the only other restriction will, in fact, be the not used for two successive years by the Girl Scouts for a camp, and the title will turn over to the town, and uh, then there'll be a conservation restriction. That's pretty much it for the restrictions. What, uh, what type of build-out are you anticipating from the Girl Scouts Council? I've not heard of any particular plan, but it mm -hmm. might, might be to create an open field. And 
And if the town owns it uh, from the town manager's discussion, they may want to have a recreation field there. Not bleaches, not that kind of thing, but maybe just a grass field. It's not big enough for soccer. So this restriction in area B, would that allow, do I have that right? Whatever the in, internal area is, um, would that allow uh, additional structures in there? I, I have really had that conversation with the Girl Scouts. That, that was my concern from the start. What if anything would be built there? You know, if you have a couple big posts, you said it so the kids can climb up and down or whatever they do for exercise. Um, that's one thing, but you know, on how, is there any kind of constraint on building built into them? There, there's no intention of dwellings uh, involved, uh, so that could be precluded. I mean, I'd be satisfied with that, I mean, as long as it's totally right. specified that we're not building. Right, I mean, it's been used the way it is for years. Uh, the only thing I could see would be opening it up open up the field area. So bleachers, would that be considered? Oh, it's already in there. For the field? It's already in there. It's all good. Okay. Bleachers? No, no. No bleachers? No, I mean, that could be precluded. So even if this field needed, like, so you probably allow some sort of, like, storage areas and whatnot for equipment for the field, right. things like that. So right. you'd have to be kind of, you'd have to write that. Right, and, and as you recall from a conservation standard language, you've got whole bunch of prohibited activities and you get certain exceptions. So the exception here is where we're going to be working on ability to uh, to create a field area. But uh, dwellings could be prevented. I mean, obviously that's the whole idea is to prevent that kind of buildup. Are we assuming that this area A, once it's all specified, is going to be a sort of granite marker kind of place? Is that the sort of thing we'd be aiming for? Or is that, are we just trying to define it? I tried to do straight lines because I figured there'd be some sort of corner markings. Uh, I hate to have them go to the expense. I know you know may have grain up markets so people don't mow into yeah. wetlands and so forth. I'd rather see if they couldn't anyway some sort of a metal marker. But I, I was trying to keep straight angles here, no matter how we end up with it, to minimize the cost of demarking that area. Area B is that large because a field would take up most of that area? I felt that I was trying to give them the greatest latitude that as to where they field? might locate it. That'd be one field or two? That's, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's, at this point, it's conjecture. There may never be a field there. But I didn't want to preclude them from having that right. And it may well be that if there's one field that may be in the northern sector, maybe it's better in the southern sector. That's going to depend upon the future. That I hate to preclude that now. As long as it has to stay as open area. So, so some of the first language in the uh, the conservation restriction on the uh, draft is that the land remains and you know for conservation purposes. So there's so little of this that would would qualify for that. I'm just wondering if you know there's room to move some of these lines, and that's why I want to know how big the field was and how many you're expecting and. You know, this, this area around the edge is, is pretty much the conservation area that no one can touch, and that's for the habitat and whatnot. The rest is going to be a field. Right. Fertilized and mowed and left open and used right. all the time. Right. It's not much habitat going to be happening out there except for uh, Canadian or Canada geese. So, but as, as long as that can be talked about, you know, where those lines can move between A and B, that... Yeah. that is a big, makes a big difference in right. my mind. Yeah, I say I just created that line for the sake of discussion. Mm -hmm. So the line could certainly be moved. It needs to be defined in the conservation restriction, but it can be moved from where it's drawn to what's on your screen. Okay. Any uh, comments from the community, the audience? Um, that's a great idea. So if, if this appears to be something that you could support if it's done the right way, then we'd go to step two, and that would be asking the engineer to maybe put some markings up there if you want to then walk the site. Right, I think it would that. be a good idea. Yeah. 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 I would like to. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a notice of intent 270-0701 
285 Main Street, Map 12, Lot 43, Afaha, Taj Engineering, LLC. Um, Chuck, did you get some plans this afternoon? Yeah, I got some plans this afternoon, a uh, few hours before this meeting, and I brought them here on a thumb drive. So, um, we have Sean from uh, Taj Engineering to discuss this. Okay. Huh? Thank you. Uh, I'm here to represent Max Gabriello, who owns Perfecto's Cafe. And your last name, Sean? Casey. Okay. C-A-S-E-Y. And I'm here because my boss has to be at another meeting, surely right now. So I have to pinch it while he's there. And as I was saying, Max Gabriello owns Perfecto's Cafe right down the road at 285 Main Street. And I am here on his behalf to seek permission to create three parking spaces that will consist of um, permeable asphalt. Uh, you can see right there, they're in the back right corner of the parking lot. Uh, the need here is he doesn't have enough parking for his employees and lately they've been parking in the neighboring lot. Um, they weren't happy with that. It's been a point of contention. And uh, as we marked on the plan, they sought to lease parking spaces from the neighbors and that was denied. So ultimately, uh, Max, the applicant, decided to go through this process for the three parking spaces. Um, and this is the second time, this is the second um, uh, time we've been here for this exact question. So uh, obviously I wasn't here last time, but I assume you all were. And uh, my understanding is we addressed the comments that were brought up last time. We removed the line of evergreens along the back right property line, and we replaced it with a wood guardrail that will surround these parking spaces to prevent people from driving through the parking space to the wetland zone, or to the conservation area in the rear. Um, in addition to that, we also repaired the concrete block wall also along the right property line. And um, we advised to replace the dead wetland species um, in the shaded by the, um, the lines, the line shaded hatch area right there. Um, and I believe that was all the comments that were brought up last time, but if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Do you have the detail of the, the proposed guide reel, Chuck? Yes. Yep. So there it is in the top left. It'd be three feet high, six feet between the posts, um, and then it's four by four posts with two by eight rails. stand up to snow plow? Uh, the plan is actually to plow it with the bobcat. Okay. So they won't be pushing or pulling any snow into the guardrail. They'll be dropping it over. So I already sent uh, Uchi, um, which is Sean's boss, a email requesting uh, 10 by 10 posts and 3 by 8 rails. Is that what is depicted? That's what probably 5 by 8. 10 by 10 posts right there. Those are 10 by 10 posts in the image? Yeah. That's what we had Does discussed it? when we was here before. I'm sorry? The last meeting, that's what we had discussed with your boss. Really? About the detail for the, the uh, guard room. Yeah, it has to be substantial because, you know, we're not going to get, I mean, now the place is built out and um, if we get these things in the first time and they're, you know, uh, big enough structure, they're not going to, even if they bump into them, it's going to take, you know, it's going to take a bit. Let's get the dumpster right there, so there's going to be a lot of traffic heading out in that area, so this is pretty standard. It is more or less for a roadway, but <coughs> all that activity over there, plus the fact that you guys are parking there now, and the, and the um, Bobcat is going to dump snow over it, it needs to be sufficient size to take some abuse, and 4x4s four four won't do that. Okay. I think we would be open to putting 10 by 10s in there. Um, and I guess I would ask that you not hold back putting in the spaces for the 10 by 10. I think that can be addressed. Hold back what? Uh, the approval to put in the parking spaces. Oh. Because I believe all the other comments were addressed. Yeah, and, and about those comments, is there, so we just didn't get a chance to review this, no one did. Is the plant list somewhere in here? 
Is the it on this plan? is not specified on this plan, no. We refer back to the original notice of intent and order of conditions. So is the plant, the planting going to occur in that odd shaped, it's like an amoeba? Or is it just along the, the, the edge where the dead <coughs> white pines are? Uh, we advise to plant where there's any dead species. There's multiple of those odd shaped areas. There's the biggest one in the back, that one on the side, and more of them. So we advise to plant wherever they're dead in those hatched areas. Is, Chuck, is that our understanding from last the last meeting? The last meeting we asked them to take out the aprovites next to this parking area and put as many of those in there. I don't know, was there 17 or something like that? Put as many of those as they could in that 25 foot zone and then replace the dead uh, vegetation that's back there also. Okay. That's way too much stuff for that one area, so they're gonna have to shrink it down a little bit. So I was wondering, from a plant list, what would you, would you be working with? Because I don't think the white pine worked back there. Yeah. So the aprovite might. Um, but it, it's pretty limited. I mean, it would be better to have a more robust, uh, kind of natural looking and uh, working habitat area. So we could condition a few plants in there. Uh, you know, I think we could, we could do something like that. I'm not sure if that would work or to have a list. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry I'm not intimately familiar with all the plants that were planted there originally. Um, I know there was at least five plus species and you said that pine didn't work out particularly well. But I think there has been other species that have worked there. My, my concern I think in this area is this is where it would, they're dumping the snow. Are they using salt on, on their parking lot? I'm sure they are. So it would have to be hardy yeah. and a wetland plant and a good fit for that area. Well, it doesn't have to be a wetland plant. No, that's, it's that's like or, it's well, a native. That's yeah. well. Yeah. It's a good fit for that. I'd like, I'd like to see some proposals from the applicant about, you know, talk to a plant person about this area and what will thrive with the anticipated use and the, the way the territory is. And get us a list of native species. Um, I thought that was gonna come with this submit, but I guess it didn't. Um, so that, that's my sense. Yeah, well, we also haven't had time to look at this. Yeah. Discuss the salient points, but so once we get that, we can. I think that these are some of the last out remaining issues. Isn't that true, Chuck? With yeah. The guardrail and the plantings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I don't think that. Not much of what's in that hatched area for the plantings has has uh, come back the second year. And there's a lot of it where it says snow storage that there's a truck parking on every day. So that's that's pretty much gone, and that extends past where the um, where the dumpster is. Mm -hmm. So th thinking of that, um, you know, in, the, in your storage area, you wouldn't you really wouldn't want to put plants close, but maybe you could extend them around around the corner there. Maybe. plants that you picked and what was on the old notice of intent would work. So there is a list. It's a great planting plan on the original notice of plant uh, intent. Please feel free to pick anything off that because a lot of it worked in the front of the building. Um, and then you had the aprovite too. I guess we're not asking for everything because you just don't have enough room. But something that uh, will get planted and establish itself and not die off. Just to clarify, um, 
for the snow storage area, you don't want wetland species, but you want native species? We're looking, we're looking for when we, when we have some input on what gets planted to revegetate, um, it's just more supportive of native habitats. You know, so it's a na natural that, 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 that okay. species we have. Yeah. You know. um, well, actually, I need some help now because I was assuming what you just did, Chuck, that that becomes the planning area, replacing our mm -hmm. yeah. river, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what is that? So the snow storage area is going to be grass, I assume. Yeah. Right? Should be. Okay. Which is what it is. But it basically is now. now yeah. And national. the bank is really vegetated and it's nice. Um, yeah. And I wouldn't put any trees very close to the building, so you might do shrubs next to the building, maybe a couple red maples you know further along but that's all they need to be 15 feet apart um, you know I don't know what to pick for the shrubs but you might only be able to get I don't know 10 between shrubs and trees 10, 10 species in there right that, that, what you just drew redoing it Chuck makes a lot of sense to me it seems like it's practical from both directions well, and once you go past, once you go east of that property line, isn't it already treed woods back there anyway? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna it's, it's gonna dense. continue that and it's gonna pull it's it out. Very dense. So good. Do you, uh, in an attempt to um, get this further along, do do we want to suggest some plants? I could suggest a couple plants. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so there are things in the azalea family, swamp azalea, some native dogwood shrubs, yellow twig dogwood, red twig dogwood. I believe those are part of the original planting list. Oh, okay. Dogwood I don't know shrubs, definitely. That, but yeah, so those would be do well. Um, some sort of thick, some ground covers could do well, some ferns, some native ferns, cinnamon ferns. That's, that's behind the building there, that's bone dry. Yeah, but that's... Building. I think the ferns will once they establish, they're pretty hardy, and once they kind of they kind of clump together, so it could be something to kind of cover up and stabilize some of the woodland too. So, I mean, any tree suggestions? I think we've talked about this in the past, but any even drought tolerant plant will need to be watered at first. <laughs> so you can't just you know you're going to have to water it at first and take and then work on its own. But. Uh, trees, I mean, Chuck said red maple, some white oaks even. Uh, I've talked about witch hazel quite a bit, which is an understory tree. I'm not quite sure about the tolerant, the drought tolerant fact, but um, native uh, tolerant shade understory, if there's some canopy there. I would say some birch, but birch are a little fragile. They do well in that area, but I don't know if they if there was significant snow piling. I don't know if they. Would do. I know it's a little further away now with Chuck's new. Yeah, they could be further away. Shape, but but for sure, river birches. Yeah. White birch, black birch. They'd love it there, I would assume. So are we asking for a continuance yes. and to get the do change of plan, uh, just so you know, that he knows. Uh, I make a motion then to continue uh, uh, NOI 270-0701-285 Main Street. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Just before you go, just so that, you know, I think what we're looking for is we're looking for a planting plan with species and also the change in the plan for what we had asked for for the 10 by 10 and like the 3 by 12 for the, the guard reel. Yes. detail. Yeah. Are we interested in the footings for that? I mean, no. No. just speaking of, I would think the detail might have. I don't know. If does the detail show how your detail does not show subgrade? So we'll show it as a show subgrade building. on that detail. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I would think. Did you write that? I don't know. Back filling with even gravel of some sort probably wouldn't hold up as well. Right over time, the bobcat trucks and things. Yeah. We're talking concrete. Yes, unfortunately, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think you need that, but just changing from 4 by 4s to 10 by 10s is uh, significant enough. Depend upon how deep they go in the ground. But yeah. like I said, if you show that detail, it doesn't show that here. 
think you'd want to show that in the detail. Yeah, so we'll reflect that, uh, the subgrade on the guardrail. Yeah. We'll reflect the time by time change, and then we'll get a species list back to you. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Did you um, I just, one more question. Yes. Did you address the engineer's questions? Or all those? The town engineer's you, comments? Yeah, all those comments. We would want that to be finalized also. Uh, I believe we did. I mean, if you don't mind, I could check a list real quick. I think the, the town engineer, his main concern was also the guardrail. So, okay. I mean, as long Did as you want some that. numbers on the uh, drainage? No, because we're doing the pervious asphalt, um, and there's no grading changes to the site whatsoever. So the overall drainage impact is yes. going to be minimal. I wasn't at that meeting. All right, I'll, yeah. I'll check on that. I thought that that was something he wanted. but We included um, a stormwater management operation on that detail sheet that says he has to clean the previous pavement monthly. Um, there's no winter sanding in that area and many other um, processes that would keep it, you know, keep the, the pavement permeable so as to not affect the drainage. Okay. All right. Thanks, Sean. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, next item on the agenda is RDA 2018-430 Glenmere Circle Map, 15 lot 96 Windsor. And you can introduce yourself. Sure. Mark Windsor with 30 Glenmere Residence. <coughs> right now. Um, I was wondering if you could continue uh, Castellano, those two. All right. First. We have two notices of intent. 270-0705, 270-074. Do I hear a um, make a motion to continue? Both of those in a wise. Second. All those in favor? Okay. I know you guys are saying tied, but you have to do them separate. Okay. Okay, do another one. Uh, Just say the next Make a motion to continue NOI 270 0705 1503 Main Street, Lot A, Map 60, Map 60 Lot 11. Second. All those in favor? Make a motion to continue NOI 270 0704 1503 Main Street, Lot B, Map 60 Lot 12. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Sorry for the end. Okay, um, so I guess just a little bit of history about it was the first time we were here, we, um, we had a, our first plan, which had a, a total of 16 trees on it, um, and we had uh, some notes on the plans um, that were addressed last meeting that um, I have updated. Uh, Chuck now has the new plan. And we weren't. I emailed this morning. I hope. 5.53 a.m. I'll, 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 I'll have to go and get it. I can. Uh, if, if I do a hard box that. if that's easier, Chuck. 5.53 a.m. Um, and we weren't here at the last meeting. So right. what we know is um, from what we heard from Chuck, and basically um, all of the trees were approved to be removed with the exception of H, E, L, and K. Correct. That's my understanding. Yeah, right. And that's, uh, that's shown here also. Okay. Oh, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Sorry, so on the new plans, you see that H, E, L, and K remain on the plans. Um, and we were told that we would need four trees and eight shrubs to replace the removed trees. And so basically, you can see on our new plans, we have a planting zone for eight new shrubs from the native plant list. Uh, we visited a bunch of nurseries locally to see what we could get at this time of year, just because we didn't want to kind of be surprised um, when the planting season comes, and they told us that's late August to early September. Um, we were able to find a lot of high bush blueberry bushes, and we do have a lot of deer in our yard, so we thought that might be nice for... <laughs> Breakfast. Breakfast. <laughs> um, Yours or <so>, theirs? <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah. a little bit of both. Who knows? So um, we were thinking of planting blueberry bushes back there behind the natural stone wall that we would recreate. As you guys might remember, behind L and K, there's an existing kind of crumbled old stone wall that only has, you know, maybe 10, 15 boulders still kind of living there. Mm -hmm. uh, we were just going to recreate it, you know, again, across the back where it was. 
Um, and no cement, no anything yeah, like that. Yeah, natural place stone. Natural place stone. And then we're going to plant five trees um, in our yard. Uh, Chuck told us it was four. We're going to plant five. Um, we went and also looked at the trees because we were interested in what we could achieve at this point because he said they had to be 10 feet or bigger. So we wanted to make sure we could get them. Um, what we could find locally were sugar maples, uh, red maple. Um, we were interested in a sweet bay magnolia, but we can only find up to six feet for that one. Um, there was a possibility of getting a flowering dogwood in exchange, you know, instead of that, and we could find something that was close to 10 feet for that. Um, and then we also were interested in getting a river maple. And basically the idea is once the trees come down around the edges, oh. River maple, what? River birch maple? Oh, birch. River birch. Yes, thank It you. has like the fliggy bur uh, oh, yes. bark on it. Yeah, it was very pretty. Yeah, really nice. It was a very pretty tree. Very well. All right. So basically the idea is once all the trees come out around the edges, we're going to try and place them along the back and possibly on the edges too, depending on, you know, because there's only five trees, so we'd have to kind of see how they space out. Uh, we do have enough room to place them 15 feet apart if we do go across the back. Um, but if it kind of looks a little wonky once we take out the trees, then we're even considering putting, you know, a few more on the side based on, you know, kind of how that looks. But there is room for them across the back. I think it'll give a minimum of 16 feet in some places, mm -hmm. you know, more in others. Did you, uh, for those those two trees that were in question, we talked about that over the phone. Did you add just another tree? Another the, tree. Okay. Exactly. Five trees. I'm going to ask that. And then um, uh, the stone wall, is that, uh, I see that it's in front of the drainage easement area. And is can you get that marked, or is it marked right now so you know you're in front of it? A good indicator of it is um, actually the M tree. It's right on the line of the drainage easement. So that's... That's one reason why we placed the wall right there, just because that even break is already there between our property or no vegetation and vegetation. Right. So trying to give it a clean cut. And um, how how big is that stone wall going to be? Not big, not big at all. <laughs> Less than I'd say three feet. And yeah, not I'm not wide. sure. I know that you just moved into town a couple years, years a couple years back. <laughs> And did you, I don't know if you knew this, that we do not allow um, stone from Middleton here oh, in Reading. No. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm just kidding about that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. Uh, well, I was going to get on your side. I'm going to get on your side. <laughs> no, she told me she, she ratted me out. Yeah, I was like, oh, oh my Lord's god! Out to get the stone, if any... That's too funny. Oh, she you actually just like... texted. I'm like, what? First and second. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so look for these moments. Thank you. Thank you. Wait a minute, I'm like, Middleton stone. <laughs> and then. JK, um, everyone out there. Yeah. Um, and then just on the case. on the two sides. It's not currently, obviously, in the budget because we're going to take down a bunch of trees and then plant a bunch of trees. But eventually, we'll fence in just the sides um, along the property line and obviously up to the front of our house so the children can escape. <laughs> escape. Okay. I, I just have one one comment about we've talked about the the establishing the trees. Um, yeah. So I, w I would think that the kind of LKH cluster there. With the canopy, given those trees are pretty big, pretty large, I'd say I would probably keep clear at least start that 15 or 16 foot from L. Oh yeah, just we to clear some of the canopy. Yeah, yes. we, we have, have enough room to do at least 16 feet between right. all oh, the trees, from, including okay. yeah, including yeah. If you see that at the tree. the top of the plant, it has 82 feet yep, against the right. back of the property line. Okay. So just divvy it up, it would uh, would basically come on. Like I said, if it looks a little too congested back there, just after we get kind of everything cleared out, we're even happy to kind of drip down the sides too. Yeah, I would I would think something like the river bridge. Keep in mind that might be something that might need some more sun. The other yeah. ones are pretty. Yeah, cool. so the whole left side will be cleared out, so yeah. maybe that might be the left, you know, right. kind of corner yeah. anchor tree, so he gets more right. sun than the rest of them. Um, not too far. We're not sure about the flowering tree. The dogwoods are pretty. 
kind of understory. I mean, they'll they flower, so they'll need some sun. But mm -hmm. uh -huh. I think you mentioned with maple, maple, and red maple, and they also had sugar, very good looking sugar right. maples. Like some of the trees yeah. at this point are kind of looking bad at the nurseries, so they had some good looking. Yeah, they had a fifty percent off section at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, some of them were it's looking nice all sad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Healthy looking trees, so that they kind of live. Go with these nursery. Ah. Actually, a great selection, to be honest. Seems like you've done your homework. Yeah. So, um, I have a order, uh, not an order, but it's a determination prepared for this. I can fill in uh, conditions if, the, if anything different than what we've already talked about. Um, but you can sign tonight if you want to. Um, any comments from the community? Hearing none. Um, I move we issue a negative determination with conditions for 30 Glenmere Circle. Dwyer, second? Second. All those in favor? Yes. Great, that's it. Good. I can, okay. uh, you can pick this up or I'll send it out to you um, tomorrow. Great, great. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Chuck, for that comment. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for playing. It's just on. It's on. It'll be on TV too. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a good night. You too. They just make a motion to um, make a motion to uh, continue RDA to 2017 10 288 to 292 Grove Street, Lot 37, Lot 4, Meadowbrook Golf Club. I'll second. All those in favor? So we're not discussing that either. Nope. No, we have uh, new plans and drainage plan. I didn't know with the new members, does any other member want a drainage plan or to review? Drainage plan. For Meadowbrook. Uh, is it grossly different than the last one? Yeah. It's plan. yeah. Well, he added he added a new drainage, a couple new drainage structures, and some more um, granite curbing. Okay. So it does change it a Didn't little. Didn't change bit. the rain garden or any of the other things that were there. No. But you did have a. There's a. Uh, drainage great across. Across yeah. the driveway, right? Right. At the so base. Long. Okay. If you like, I have two extra. If someone wants one, just contact me. I'll send it out to you or bring it to your house. You can just send that to email, Chuck. I'll take a look at that. Okay. Okay, under old new business, we have um, Johnson Woods, unauthorized removal of one tree. And we have a photograph of that. And Anika has um, been in contact with the folks at Johnson Woods. Uh, I'm sorry, but I guess it's a point of order or information. I'm a resident of Johnson Woods, so I recuse myself okay. from this conversation. So if you recuse yourself, you need to, I need to sit leave. in the audience. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so um, I'm just trying to find my trip report. I can't remember. Anyway. Um, but um, for the sake of the record, would you introduce yourselves, gentlemen? Sure, I'm Larry Healy. I live at uh, 16 Green Meadow Drive in the Johnson Woods property, and I'm the uh, volunteer chair of the Property Management Committee. And I'm Ted Moore. I'm the trustee of the Johnson Woods Condominium Trust, and I've also been the uh, developer there for the last 17 years. Okay. Sorry, Brock, I should a long time ago. Only 17 years. <laughs> Is that how long it's been? 17 years? Wow. Well, actually, it was 17 years in June, so we're, we're going we're into year 18 now. So, and, and uh, one, we're, gonna, we're going to, uh, I volunteered to uh, donate to the town a improvement um, system so that people
people on sitting on the board here can be heard by people in the audience. Because if you're sitting in the back row, you guys are talking. I don't, I don't think anybody can hear you. And it's the same. It's not just you. It's the it's all the, it's the planning board. It's the CPDC. It's like what are they talking about? You can't even hear them. So and you don't have a you don't have a microphone. So yeah, that needs to get that needs to get today, fixed. Yeah. So for tonight, I need to ask you to speak up a little bit because I'm over 65 and I don't hear as well as I did when I was 25. <laughs> Thank you. Gotcha. So, um, Mr. Haley, I, I met you out at the site. Um, I think this all, uh, just to back up, I think this started uh, back in June. I was going to say, I think you made some initial contact and it took us a couple of weeks to actually, you know, meet together on the site. Right, but I think the initial um, notification to conservation came mid-June. We did not make an official. Uh, there was there was an official. It's my understanding there was a complaint issue. That's what I'm. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. You know, sort of. This began. This okay. started. I'm just giving a brief history. So this began kind of mid June, um, and there was a complaint that a tree was cut down, um, and you and I played phone tag for one or two weeks, um, and then finally we uh, had a chance to go out there. Um, I can't remember the date, but it was um, it was it was mid July, at least. It's mid July, um, early to mid July. So, um, and we walked the site, and I had um, property plans. Um, and Mr. Haley, if, if you want to just um, discuss your understanding of. Uh, the property and what you told me about the jurisdictional area and, and sort of what you understood the process to be. Okay. Let's well, go ahead. I'll, I'll be happy. So there are several areas on the site that um, we set concrete bounds back in you know, 2003, and there's a you know there's a reading. Redding wetlands, which is a you know, you know a little bit of there's a couple of conservation areas and there's a non-state Redding, Redding wetland area. and the area we're talking about today is not one of those. It's not the Redding wetland area. It's one of two. There's a there's a wetland area over on Longwood Road and there's one that kind of is right here. And this is our this is stormwater retention basin. But there's a wetland you know, there's a wetland area where Salaman Park is here. And, there's one you can go up here. The other way. Uh, there's this is got there's one here and there's one here. Just sort of, you know do no you know do, do don't do anything in those areas. And so we haven't done anything in those areas. In this particular tree we're talking about there is a tree at the back of 39 Taylor, which the, the base of the tree is actually half on our half in the non-conservation area and half in the conservation area. It's right on the, the borderline goes right through it. A big branch fell off the tree last year, damaged our building. The, damaged the building that was there. The tree's dead. So we um, actually hired a Try to hire a crane, a, a, a big crane, to lift the lift this dead tree over the building so it didn't fall on the building. And they said they couldn't do it safely. So then we hired. We then said, okay, let's see if we can get somebody to climb the tree and take it down in pieces. And they got about 20 feet up the tree. About eight feet up the tree, and where they were tied off on it, so the tree itself was so rotted the. Uh the workman actually fell out of they fell came, out of the tree. Came back, well, fell out of the tree. Okay. Yes. Came back down. So now we have a dead tree sitting on a border. It could fall on our building. It's a dangerous situation. And so we had the tree company. Our third try was to to drop the tree on the ground, and the tree sitting there. So it's a dead tree in the woods. So so tell me how you understand the jurisdictionality of that tree. On what maps well, I'm do you... Confused. I'm confused because I don't know. There's two things. I don't know whether it's it's half on our land and half on... It's all on our land, but half it's in the jurisdictional, half it's in the 
don't come in here area half it's in our area and so I don't know how we you know if I could have cut it vertically and gotten rid of our half of it and leave your half of it sitting there to fall over on us or you that might have happened but how did you make that determination did you determine it based on the plans I'm, I'm, that I'm just sort I'm of wondering this is Johnson Woods it's not Johnson Meadows we have preserved more trees up there no, I, than, no, I know. Than, pardon just... me than just if I might than any developer than most anybody else has in any place we love trees but when we have dead trees and fallen buildings we feel like we got to do something about them for I'm, safety I'm, I'm not I'm not so I'm shocked that the Conservation Commission would even feel offended by that this is not a this is not a matter of offense this is a matter of enforcement and enforcement. What, what are we enforcing? We don't jurisdictional want a dead tree to fall areas a like First of all, we have to talk about jurisdictional areas because we have authority over jurisdictional areas, right. which is why you had to do the permitting in the first place. I'm not, you know, this is not an emotional issue. This is a so you have legal authority. Issue. We give, you have authority. Fine, we agree. Fine. So, so what would you like us to do? Well, I just want to understand how we the, stay out. We stay out of we stay out of the jurisdiction your jurisdictional areas. We have in every case over 17 years. We have a dead tree that part of which fell in our building. And damaged the roof, yeah. and we said we got a problem here. We got to fix it. And we don't take any issue with you doing the necessary repairs and maintenance and monitoring, you know, and protecting your property. You know, that's never been an issue. How that do we do it from an eighty-foot dead tree that's on the borderline? We could let the tree fall and fall down in pieces, or we could get you know, we could try to lift it over the house. That's not our. That's not. So originally was that tree? Well, I'm just saying, practically speaking, what 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 would you do if you were in our uh, shoes? Yeah. So on the original order of conditions, I was just wondering if they allowed you to take a certain amount of trees out, and but you had to leave some because that's why that tree was so close to your project. No, we 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 have. I mean, have you been there? Yeah. There's trees everywhere. Too many we move buildings to save trees. Yeah. That's. But like this one was particularly close. This was on the this was on the borderline, yeah, and we didn't touch it. We built the house. We left the tree alone. Okay. I understand why. And a number of trees, you know, a number of trees. So, Anika, does that plan show? So, where trees could be cut or where they can't be cut. So, so here's, I, um, yeah, I wish I could bring back my trip report, and if anybody read it, I'm just trying to remember what I wrote in there. But so, um, Larry, you and I went out. And then we tried to find the bounds, and we tried to look at this map and kind of vet in the field where these the hundred foot buffer zone, the jurisdictional area, is in the back of that. You know, you, you, I don't know if you remember that process with me, but for everybody else, it has to we, do with we this were small. Able to locate a couple of the concrete bounds. So we were yeah. able to locate a couple of the concrete bounds, and according to those locations, those concrete bounds behind that building didn't line up with what was on this plan. You know, so it was one of these situations where it's hard to tell based on this plan and the bounds in the field what the true jurisdictional area is and, and behind really, that I building. I can, it's you, very confusing. We set the concrete bounds were set by Hayes Engineering in 2005 when Fran Fink was the conservation officer here and Fran was all over every single bound and we have the bounds have not been moved for 13 years or 14 years and Fran, Fran was the agent she walked every bit of the property, saw the bounds. That's where we 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 believe the bounds are wherever they were supposed to be. And if you line up these two bounds, which I have done, they, there's two bounds on either side of the street. They run right through the middle of the tree. I don't know what that, I don't know if that matters. To me, well, it probably doesn't matter. The tree, the tree, you know, is very very close to the end of that hundred feet. You know, whether it's you know half in, half out. Well, the, the bounds are there. The, I can you can stand. I I I, know I stood bounds. on a bound. I know. And I looked at the other we bound. We saw them. And it goes right through the tree. We, we saw them. So you agree it goes no. through the tree? Uh, not by the way I saw it. According to the bounds, the way I lined up the bounds, the tree was in the 100. No. Actually, I, so I spent, uh, I spent a very significant amount of time out at the site the other day. And um, to what I saw. Um, and I located the two boundaries that were there. And I actually lined up 
some birch trees and some alder trees and things like that with the concrete bounds. And I actually think the majority of the stump is on the building side of those two concrete bounds, not the other way. Yeah, I, I and I'm saying I got the same. I did the same thing. I stood at the one on the right, and there's that other bound next to that other tree. And I mean, it's get, it's very close. Yeah, it's right. But I mean, I would it say goes that the stump you know, somewhere. You know, for the, the size of the stump, it's it's um uh, and I and I I went on both well, sides of it. This map. <laughs> That's the picture I took. So. You know, I, st I stood at this one and looked in the other tree. The other tree, there's this, there's that birch That's tree. That's the birch tree that yeah, I'm talking about. Right yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I, I I lined it up. I actually I actually went on both sides. I went on the hundred uh, the, the concrete marker that was on one side and the concrete marker on the other side, and I stood behind each one of them. You can't really see uh -huh. from the left. It's hard to see through there. You can't really see both of the concrete bound markers. But what I did is I actually picked a tree when I was at both ends of it. So I picked a particular tree and then lined it up with the trees. And like I said, I would say that from what I saw, 75% of the stump was on the building side of that line. Um, uh, but, you know, I also did see some, you know, some things that indicated the, the stump of that tree. I did, I actually have a picture of the stump of the tree that it had, uh, some indication of intergrown bark and things like that in the stump of the tree that indicates weakness in the tree. Um, but you know, I obviously didn't see the tree when it was standing. I didn't see anything that fell down, but it's a big tree. Um, but, you know, it's so, a, the, the, bow, the bow market, it's very close um, to that, to those two concrete bow markets. My, my point is, I think we have a very defensible historical record of we don't cut trees down whether they're in the never in the, in the conservation area or an area I'm a tree lover I love trees I can say I move buildings to save trees but if I have a dead tree that's gonna hurt a building I got a problem I could hurt something I could have somebody get hurt and Larry Larry worked on this three different ways and we ended up with the only way to protect the building was to get the tree we couldn't lift it over. We couldn't take it down in pieces. We had to get rid of the tree and fall it in the direction that it fell in, so it didn't fall in the building. So that's all well and good, other than the fact that we have a tree policy that anything that's within 100 feet of a wetland resource area, you're supposed to come and ask the Conservation Commission permission sure. to cut the tree down. So the tree went down before you actually. Right. Well, so I don't. So we, we don't know whether it's whether it's 99.9 .9 or 100. Point. Right. So that that's the. So, that's so the I'm, point we don't at this work. Point. We can live and learn. We're sorry to have done that, but we don't. But you know what? 100% of it was dropped in the conservation area. So we could have dropped it on the building. Where, where should we drop it? Well, I, I think that if you're dropping something, so just to step back, so you, you, you have some ammo, um, fill, dredge, alter. This would be alter. This is what we protect and we stop and we need permits for. So when you drop that tree in there, you weren't doing what nature does. You were altering the area. So this if, is why if, we if ask tree people. To, but, 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 but okay. this is why we ask people to come to us beforehand so we can give them some direction. Sure. That, and we would have loved to give you some direction on this one. And uh, that, I mean, that's. I think that would have helped everybody here. We didn't know it was in the jurisdiction. Well, and that's what have, we would have helped with that too. We would have said, you know, I think. 100 almost out of the jurisdiction would be fine I mean let's take the tree down it's almost out no one's gonna get out there with a tape measure sure. but but the real question is can you leave that tree and all that debris and knocking down all the other trees that it fell on top of out there and I think that would have been the main point of the discussion the Commission would have and, had. and my question would be over on the Longwood Avenue there's Longwood roadside there's three or four acres of trees if a tree falls down in the woods what do you guys do about it what do we do do we remove it do we let it sit there and rot what happens if a tree in the conservation area if a tree falls in the forest what do we do with it what do you do with it what do we do in any other areas that are in the jurisdiction fair question well when they fall naturally it's it's there's nothing we can do about okay it. it's true so this didn't fall naturally, but it was going to fall naturally, and I didn't want it to fall in our building. 
It did right, say that a branch it, it, it did is, fall on yeah. the building. Pardon me? Yeah. 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 In, in fact, there was damage to the building, to a gutter system, okay? Uh, it was, there was another branch that ultimately was going to come down and damage the deck. It would have been great if you had come to us before because, you know, I would consider that a danger tree. But, the, but where it has landed, it seems like a problem. But when I looked out there, it looked like getting it out of there was a huge problem too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, there's a red squirrel yeah. that's calling that home right now, by the way. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, there is. You know, if, if we asked, for, you, if we asked yeah, for permission right. and you said lift it over the building, we said we hired somebody. They Good can't deal. do it. Climb, climb the tree. We hired somebody. Can't do it. So what's the next step? Well, you got to leave. You got to let it. I didn't see the tree standing. So that's first off. From the pictures, it it appears that someone could have climbed the tree and limbed it. No, we, we, if someone fell out of the tree, I suppose there's a look. I don't. I guess was it. There's actually three trees. Right. There's the three leaders there. Mm -hmm. They're kind of grown together. Yeah. yeah. But that was our initial plan: was to have somebody climb the tree and. And it was yeah. Okay, yeah. But you had somebody climb the tree. Yeah, I was Larry, say, I, I wasn't there. Larry did. And, and once, in fact, the, the climber fell out of the tree, we decided that was not a safe activity to continue. In fact, he would not get back in the tree. I don't blame him. I think I think the point is, and I made it, I, I mentioned it to you, is, you know, um, when in doubt, let's have the discussion. You know, um, not saying, like, don't protect your property. That's not what we're in the business of doing here. But let's have the discussion and let's, you know, we're not going to hold you back from getting what you need to get done done. We're not going to hold you up. But if, if there is any doubt, you know, and since, since you have protected so much of the buffer, you can almost practically assume that you know most of the trees that are there are within the protected spaces. Don't we get any credit for what we've done for 15 years? We've protected all those You absolutely get areas. credit. That's why you don't get any fines or penalties I, I, or anything like that. I don't even like care about right a fine. Just, so, I'm offended so, that I, did, I tried to do the right thing. This and is not a personal offense. This what? is just no, a clarifying I mean. and building a relationship and trying to you know, trying to get things straight. If we can straight. make Fran Fink happy for 10 years, yeah. we've succeeded. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This wasn't, a, I mean, I don't care how you try to splice it. This was ridiculous. I mean, we should have been involved. I mean, that's all there is to it. We, You've we, done we, great we, for 10 years. What do people remember when something happens? They remember the last thing you did. Well, that's, you can do that, but I, I want to be I judged. Did. I don't want to be judged by one bill in a four-year legislative process. So we get, we're getting down to what happens to the tree that's 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 in there i mean i didn't look around the tree i don't think dave did it it could be possible that it could stay there i know that we have someone who contacted us from your building that wants it removed um, so we can do the we can do a freedom of information act and find out who that was Is that possible <laughs> yeah go ahead go through that that's fine um and so maybe we should do a site visit and um, see if there, you know, what the damage is, where it fell. And when you guys said, well, let's just drop it, did you talk about a step before that? Did you talk about, can we take it out? Did that ever happen? No, we ab absolutely had that conversation. Oh, so what, what okay. tell us about that. So behind the building, Scanlon, you saw it, there, there is probably... 15 foot drop from where this tree is to the rest of the elevation. Okay, the and it's 60 feet high. Right. And so it's we're right talking in the middle of the building. Oh, so it's it was right only a crane. That's right. all you talked about. Just we, we hired a crane operator. We hired a crane. Yeah. And then. The initial thought was to climb the tree, take it down in sections. We, okay, the crane company, and that's why we had somebody climbing the tree. The crane company that we we went to three different crane companies, and finally, no one would touch the tree. And bring it up over the occupied building. Okay, so, so then we considered the limbing the tree yeah. and taking it out in pieces. Okay, and when in fact the workman fell from the tree, we abandoned that idea. It, does that give an opportunity now that it's on the ground and you could cut it up in pieces and remove it? 
I don't know how you're going to get it out of there. I'll be very honest. Without doing we other the extent of the, damage to the area. We ex the extent of the, the crane where it was at coming over the building. We I, I will suggest right now that we made the situation probably impossible because you've got 45 to 60 feet on the front side, over the roof, down on the back side, and now into that lower elevation. Mm -hmm. Said I didn't. I didn't walk around the tree. I did. I walked about halfway up that stump. That's you know again. That's a big tree. It goes way way out in there. Um, man, I don't. I don't know. You know you. I don't know if a crane company would actually, if you went out there with a chainsaw and cut it in small lumps and took it, whether to take that out, even at that point. But. Um, Um, yeah, I don't know if, if that's, that doesn't sound forest, like a viable option. Area, naturally, do you try to get it out of there or does it sit on the ground? And it sits on the ground. It sits on the ground. There's no access here, right? So, so the driveway is here and you can, well, you park here. I parked here and you can just walk. And there's, there's a big back wall. And this map, honestly, based on, I mean, I, I, I totally trust I do trust that if Fran was involved with approving these bounds, then I must be looking at the wrong type of plan here because this plan shows the 100 foot going through the back of the left side of that building. Yeah, I see what you're you saying. You know, the and um, the plan is going to be more accurate than the bounds because they well, have should to, be. Yeah. But I don't know if this was the it, final survey. You know what I mean? Was but this I think the final even survey? Even so, we're down to what to do with the tree. Where right. Are, where right. are the bounds are? Right. So, you know, I, I don't know if we want to take take a look at it. I don't know if you want to just keep going with what to do here. You know, if uh, Carl has any suggestions about a tree like that, you know, limbing it up and well, bringing so out what you can and leaving fair, your big stuff behind. I haven't been there. Which so. This conversation, I'd be happy to go. But I was going to say, if there was any access to even back up some sort of truck, you can't. There is no. For the, you, no. That's why I looked the building. No. Right. <laughs> but the best you can, me. you're going to carry it out. Short, short of going the in building. there and bucking this thing up into 16 inch lengths yeah. and splitting it in the woods and carrying it out piece by piece, that realistically is the only way you're going to do this. Right. And I would, I would advance to you that you're going to trample all the understory that's either side of that tree trying to get all those pieces out and, from where and it sits. what was the, uh, the complaint or who, someone wants it removed? Yeah, yes. someone said the town took the tree down. Originally we got one that said the town took the tree down and why did they leave it there? And then we got, I think we got another one um, that said they understand why the tree was taken down but they still want it removed. So I think we have two all together and they're on the uh, C-Click Fix site. Well, honestly. I don't know if that's, everyone can look at that. But, um, you know, at this point, the question in my mind is, what's the benefit or, or detriment the tree currently does to the habitat area? You know, um, and does removing it does removing it cause more detriment than good? I, I think so. I, yeah. I think you know. Dave has a good point yeah. about yeah. that. Um, and you can't get any vehicle back there. No. The only way, but you're saying the crane, you know, even if you cut it up in pieces, the crane won't take it up. The problem is the crane could easily reach the tree, but when you pick up the tree, it's going to fall back towards the, you know, the boom can't go. If that's a 60-foot building, there's no, I mean, it, we do crane lifts quite a bit. This, I don't think there's a, I would agree you can't stop that tree from swinging back. The only, <laughs> the only safe way to actually remove that tree from a crane is to actually park the crane on the inward drive. Side. Yeah, like when you just, and, and, yeah. I mean, and then try, but. Yeah, but it's still. I'm, I'm not sure we would have had to reach. No, yeah, I don't, yeah, you know, not without, you know, an sure angle and jib and things like that. <laughs> yeah, you're talking a. 
the giant crane. Check, is there any regarding the, some of the water removed? Is there a safety? I mean, the tree's down. I mean, it's not like it's a safe. Is that a safety issue? Of any reason? No, I mean, no, not really. You, you're not I don't know if anyone there. goes back there. I, there's there is a trail. Did it that trail that you were walking on? Did it block that trail? Yeah, that was that, that was the old hay bales. That's what I walked on. Kind of forms its own trail. It just uh, melted away hay bales out of there. That's what I walked on. And it's, you, know, you can get in there. But like I said, the, you can get in there. The only really way to get that out and get it out with any kind of reasonable cost and efficiency would be to cut it up into small pieces and carry it out a thousand pieces out of there. And I just. Uh, but the other thing is that the size of that tree, it, there's a, a ton of smaller saplings that are there around it. Uh, I'm sure those will get up before too long and, and replace the, the forest tree area there. I mean, the thing is at this point, I, I don't have a good solution to that. The tree can stay. Um, there's a there's a trail that was somewhat established. I don't know if it's a wildlife trail or people are walking that way. Yeah. But that's been blocked. And then there's the tree policy. Yeah. So let's go through those things quickly so we can move on. Oh. Does anyone feel like the trail, which I know nothing about, which is not marked on a map, needs to be reestablished? Okay. Um, I didn't see a trail. I didn't see a trail, but I went, wasn't down. I was up on that on the grass. Yeah, on I think it was stone. Was it? Was it stone? It was stone up above. Yeah, I was on the stone. I just I walked in from the that Taylor Drive where the gate is there. If you walk in where the gate is at the end of Taylor Drive, um, a gate that comes across. You know, it's pretty. It's not real steep there, but you can walk in from there and then just walk along the back of the building. That should be a moment to get, get to the tree, you know, across the back of the building and the riprap that's there. Just along the base of that retaining wall. All right, so um, I don't know about the trail. Uh, the removal of the tree, does anyone feel that that... Uh, Cause more harm than good. I'm hearing that. I think it would cause more it harm than good. Would. I just think there'd be a lot of trampling. Okay. The last thought. The last is uh, establishing jurisdiction. Does anyone feel that we don't have jurisdiction over this tree, or is that a question? The plan clearly shows that it goes to the edge I, of the building. I don't. I think we do have jurisdiction. Uh, I think we do too. I know it's a, I know it's a borderline call. Carl and Dave, have you had an opportunity to look at this plan? I didn't look at the plan. No. Can you pass that plan over to no. Dave so we can see the plan showing? I was just the going by the. the uh, what do you call it? Line. I was going by the uh, concrete piles. Should it's I spend nice the? Nice and big. It's big. Uh, I know. Probably spent about working. twenty minutes. Um, I'll let you speak after everybody else talks, well, and then you there. can introduce yourself. Did y'all sign in to the back? Yeah. Okay, there's a there's two lines here. One says limit of 100 foot setback ZNV and the other one says limit of 100 foot BVW buffer zone on this plan so there's 200 foot lines on this this plan and this one that's here this one that's here this 100 foot setback of ZNV this is where those concrete bounds are right. they're along that line okay. right there so but if you look Yep. This is 25 foot of the ZNV. Right. So that's 50 foot of the ZNV. Right. And that's 100 foot. So that's the 100 foot wetland. 
buffer. That's what this says, 100 foot Z and But this is measured off of what? Off of a different wetland? But because by scale that's, and by sense okay. on the map, so this is this, the line that's this legitimate. One, this one would be that for one. this one. That's Correct. for this one. And then this one, this this one yep. is for this one. Mm -hmm. Correct. And this is the one that the, the concrete bound to set on. I see. I don't agree with that because yeah. the because the grass back. is back there. No, the, gra I, the grass, you know, the grass the is over here. The bounds are right at the edge of the wall. Yeah. Yeah. So the grass is over here. so uh, it's not clear. Yeah. No, it's not. Um, because the. Uh, Within the 100 feet, it really isn't. Yeah. Because there's a down, there's a slope, yep. yep. a rock. Yep. Okay, and that's where the bounds are set, right there. Ted, do you have a do you have a survey plan showing where those bounds yeah, are? That was, that was presented at the time yes. ten or twelve years ago. It's done, I don't know, 2004, 2005. It was all done by Hayes, submitted to the to the town of Comscon more than a dozen years ago. Because those are the files that. I asked for and that's what I got. It didn't have the detailed plans from the back of that building. So is there any kind of uh, open space easement or conservation restriction on that land in back of you? What I remember is there were three areas that they we had to set these, you know, I call them salamander bounds, you know, the concrete things. He did all those. That, that plan and as built for those things was submitted to the town uh, to George and Boris 10 or 12 or 14 years, 14 years ago. So the, the, the way I would read so that we were, is... We, we basically, um, even with the walking trail, we didn't, like I remember going up the one on Johnson Woods Drive, mm -hmm. we kind of skirted around the, those bounds and we did a, we did a um, wood chip walking Johnson Woods Trail. We stayed out of the, we avoided being inside the concrete bounds. So I don't know what. So the concrete bounds always mark um, our jurisdiction. Sometimes it's further out, 100 foot zone of natural vegetation, when it says there. Sometimes it's the 25 foot, which usually is what we see around town. Unless there's, there's one other time that they are marked, and then it's a, some sort of deed restriction or conservation restriction. Then we want to mark the limit of that. Do, I don't remember. I don't believe we did a deed and that, restriction. And that's what I'm hearing. So given the fact that a deed restriction or a conservation restriction wasn't done, then that only leaves that someone had determined at some point that there was a wetland. And both those lines are 100 foot away from some jurisdictional area. One says Z and V. Maybe there was some an argument about whether it was... I mean, I went to a reading, you know, one indicator would be a that one back, back when this was permanent. The only thing I remember even being discussed was whether the one outside Johnson was fired. That was not a state wetland, that was a reading wetland. And we agreed to abide, that's something that I remember, we agreed to buy, abide by the reading definition of wetlands because there was a, was a vernal pool, seasonal vernal pool, something like that. So the two other two, this one and the one down by Longwood, were clearly, you know, they were clearly everybody's wetlands. And the one up on Johnson Woods Drive was a vernal pool. And we said, we'll go by the Reading definition. This is back in 14 years ago, maybe. But I don't remember, there was never, I don't remember, it was never, I don't remember it ever being contentious. Like, okay, we're going to honor that third one and put the things in, put the boundaries in, and go from there. So we have you all had an opportunity to look at the map? I don't know if that's helpful. Mm. So we're talking about whether we have jurisdiction or not. Um, we need to know that before we move on to the next question. So um, I know that Anika and Rebecca thinks that we have jurisdiction. Carl and Dave, do you have an opinion? The, there's a there's a conflict on, on this map, the way the so you're hundred foot, there's the double hundred foot lines are drawn. So you know? Yeah. And Carl? And it, uh, it kind of shows between what's shown on here and that. that. So you paid the big bucks, Carl. <laughs> next spot. 
it, do, it doesn't it doesn't transfer to this. I mean, from looking at the lines, if the, if the granite pillars are in the correct spot, it's not the granite pillars that would depict the line. It's it's a survey plan by a registered engineer, and that's what's in front of you. I think the only question is that the ZNV mean anything to you, or the 100 foot buffer zone. You, and feel free to make an opinion. This is not life or death. I mean, given that that, I would think the tree was in inside the buffer. Inside the buffer. All right. So we have we have quorum on that. Yeah. We're down to our last question. Now that it's in the buffer, we are talking about the tree policy. Our tree policy asks you to plant a tree or replace a tree somewhere in town. Uh, if you're replacing the tree, we have the town forestry department do that, and we charge you. Um, well, as we call it, a voluntary uh, donation. I have two hundred fifty dollars. I planted so many trees. <laughs> Do you have another spot for another tree? I've planted a hundred trees. Do you have a tree bank that we could um, see? Like sometimes oh. when extra trees get taken down, a tree bank's established. And sometimes when you plant yeah, extra take trees, trees down, we move it. Only, we I have a big on Monday night. I got a big hearing in front of the CPDC. Great. We moved the building ten feet to preserve two sixty-foot oak trees and. This is a different situation. Every I, mean, I know, but I'm just zone. saying it's, it's ironic. And I'm and I only going to ask, we just want to move this forward. I know it's, it's 250 well, you plant a tree. Which care. one do you want to do? What are, what are our choices? 250 to uh, written to the town of Reading, and it's donated to the Shade Tree Fund. Right. There's a uh, three. Well, we'd eight. like to do both. Okay. That's beautiful. We'll donate and we'll plant a tree. No problem. And the town, the town uses up all of it. They, they plant. That's fine. We're happy they to do that. We like trees. A lot of trees. We're Johnson Woods. So we're happy to do that. I, I, right. you, only need, you only need to we'll do one. We have enough money for only, two trees. Yes. So we have a free pass. Just one. Like one. Chuck said, only need to do one. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'd like to do more than I'm required. We also right. like to do more than so I'm required. So let's, um, I'm just trying to move it along so I don't yeah. mind. Uh, so let's just continue this. And um, if you can send me a check uh, sure. for the tree. and um, make it out to you? Wouldn't that be great? But no. You know, <laughs> no well, for two fifty, I'm not. I, I need more. Yeah, get some more. Are there any? About twenty five hundred. Questions? Uh, jump Make it out to the town. I'm ready. A, a question. Happy to. A uh, I'd say a question in terms of um, just jurisdiction. And your name is? Glenn Gutierrez, Dr. Glenn Gutierrez. Um, Fifteen years ago, with potential, there was a question about jurisdiction where this tree was in the middle or not. Was it? Is it potential possible that 15 years ago this tree was small enough to fit within a certain boundary and then it outgrew? 15 years ago? No. Uh, that that no. tree is ginormous. Yeah. It's, it's been there for a long Later time. On. Yes, sir. I have a question. That's all. My name is Sean Harris. <laughs> when 15 years ago when they did the wetlands, what if the wetlands shifted over 15 years? I've seen that happen many times from developments and stuff like that. But we use... So uh, uh, surface water and soils and the soils don't change uh, it's like geologic time for soils to change so they're looking at that and when they did a big delineation like this uh, company like Hayes they were out there a long time checking soils uh, they want to get it right. can answer all these questions that I can't answer about so it's it's how this happened you're know. right things can drain down and um, but we still go back and we look at the the soil and we look at the vegetation that would grow in areas that are more than 50 percent wet so a different type of plant would grow in those areas and we recognize that as a wetland even though it, we, and we should say jurisdictional area because a wetland makes you think oh it's like open water but sometimes it's not sometimes it's dry a lot of the times yeah. and it's but less than 51 percent yeah we now have some wonderful cattails growing in our stormwater retention basins they look great we love them yeah. birds are growing in there we have deer and coyotes and we all not too many coyotes. We like we like all that wildlife. Okay, so all right. just go ahead. I appreciate it. We'll I'll send you a check. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank for you. Coming in. Just get folded. No. I did. Oh. Just to make I usually it fit. fold those. Um, <laughs> under old new business, <clears throat> there was a certificate of compliance discussion for 218 Salem Street, but that's been. They're not coming in. And then we have a certificate of compliance for 270-20 Countryside Lane, Map 6, Lot 135, Gaffney. And this is um, a property that was oh, permitted in 1977. 77. I actually took the time to go out there today, and it 
there's there's no issues. Um, Dave, did you also did. Try? Yeah. I went home past and I was like, I couldn't see what. Yeah. I, I mean, I just wanted to be able to, because it asks if someone did a site visit, so I yeah. wanted to go up. So I, I went past, Dave went past. I passed. Yeah. I don't have any issues, and I have a certificate of compliance here, If and I recommend that we sign it. Enjoy to come back. Too much fun. Yeah. We've moved on. Do I hear a motion? Uh, I move we issue the certificate of compliance for 2055 Lane. Second. All those in favor? here from a terror cabin. Item on the agenda under old new business is Matera Cabin Rental Discussion Gutierrez, and we got um, a one page front and back in our packet. I actually didn't really know what it was, but mm -hmm. and so um, can you introduce yourself and give us a little Hi. background? Good evening. Um, I'm Susan Woods, I'm a longtime resident of Reading and a former small business owner here in town. I previously uh, ran dance studios in Stoneham, Reading, and North Reading, and a retail dancewear supply shop. I also owned and managed the commercial property at 1321 Main Street for a while. So I find myself in a place in my life today where I'm looking to venture into something new, and I'm looking to operate a small therapeutic wellness center and creative arts center in a naturistic, uh, serene, peaceful setting. And I would like to call it the Peace Center with the word peace, P-E-A-C, being an acronym for the words physical, emotional, artistic, and creative energy center. I've actually had a vision for quite some time of trying to run a center like this in a little log cabin someplace with maybe some trails out and back, but yet not too far away from the Boston hub. And so when my husband, who was with me, Glenn Gutierrez, um, stumbled upon the Matera cabin in his travels last year, I instinctively thought this would be the perfect place to do this. I then researched it a bit and contacted Chuck to see if it might perhaps be available to purchase. And after some discussion with Chuck, he suggested that I think about perhaps renting it. Um, initially, I was a little bit hesitant about renting because of a couple of things. Um, one, for my purposes, it, it does need a small bit of renovations and updates to the interior and the exterior. Things such as um, some updated furniture and decor, fresh coat of paint, some better lighting inside, perhaps uh, even replacing some of the flooring inside. And then outside, just some basic cleanup and general maintenance that's been neglected. Um, and I'm also aware that the, the town uses it for the trails, uh, trails committee, and the rec recreation department uses it from time to time, and also that it's rented out privately. So um, those things I was considering, but after giving it some thought, I'm here to ask the committee to consider a long-term exclusive rental of the cabin to me on a monthly basis for unlimited usage of it weekly. I am willing as a renter um, to do those initial renovations and updates at my own expense. 
um, and I'm not looking to displace or disturb any of the town meetings that need to happen there or the Reading Recreational um, facilities that need to happen there from time to time. However, if I were to run a business out of there and store my belongings there, um, I would like to avoid other private rentals to the general public without perhaps an agreement that would indemnify my organization. Um, if the committee is willing to entertain the proposal, I've printed out some basics that I'd like to pass out to you of how the business would operate, some details about it, and I do truly believe that my objectives um, are aligned with the targeted wishes of the benefactors of the property. Also, I'd like to see a scenario where perhaps a steady rental income from the town, uh, from me to the town, could help to offset the town's operating expenses of the cabin because I'm not sure right now if there's um, any substantial rental income that's coming in. Maybe you could tell me that. Um, and I don't want to neglect to make it clear that I appreciate the necessity to maintain the integrity of the conservation area for recreation and also the preservation of the wildlife habitat. It's exactly those things that draw me to this venue and those things that I would aspire to try to promote with this project. So um, that said, um, I don't know if you, what the protocol is, if you take it under advisement or if. Oh, I have some questions and I'm sure. sure. And I'm going to. Other members do too. Okay. Are you looking to rent the entire cabin or a portion of it? The entire cabin. And would that be to the exclusion of use, having other people use it? I don't see how that would work. To the do you do this five days a week or? Uh, six or seven days a week. So the types of programs that would be offered um, are ver varied, but things within the health and wellness field, things within the creative arts field, um, things with mind and body works and I've listed some of those curriculum there um, okay um, so your clientele give me an idea of maybe how many people a, a, a week or, or during a day so I'm thinking as a small startup business um, perhaps Conservatively, we might estimate six to eight people in a group or a program, in each program, and maybe in the beginning, six to ten programs per week. So there might be a couple on Mondays and one on Tuesdays and a couple on Wednesdays. The, the goal, ultimately, would be to have it expand and be utilized seven days a week, or six, six or seven days a week. Chuck, is there um, a map just showing where? I'm just wondering about, I guess, access with things like you know, nutrition, skin care, this sort of trash. So there's one big room that I would foresee as a studio for a dance class or a yoga class or a fitness class. The two smaller breakout rooms, um, maybe a, a room with some chairs set around and like um, journaling, book club, et cetera. The other help? room, skin care yeah. classes. Oh, so there's a dry Reiki, dry polarity. And even the loft upstairs, um, I've had an opportunity to go inside, and it's lovely, and it's a, a great space that it's just being used for storage right now. I, I have a, just a basic question here, and I think it's probably a critical question to ask at the first step off. Would this meet the criteria of the, the um, uh, yeah, right. Any deed restrictions? This was donated to the town for town use, and I'm not right. certain whether 
you could run a private business out of this, whether that would violate the terms of the the uh, well, I'm the not sure deed exactly the deed agreement that was, you know, for this uh, donation uh, going to the town. I'm not sure exactly how it's worded in the deed. So, um, you know, it's my impression that it's to be used for the enjoyment of the community, and I'm hoping to establish an organization that is for educational and therapeutic and benefit of the community. Right. And perhaps at the same time being able to employ people that are in the com community that have talents and but, gifts but, to offer. Excuse me, you're not a non-profit. Right. So no, this but I'm is not a business. opposed to going non-profit if, if, if that's a deciding factor. That's something that I've been contemplating. So that sign says that um, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts uh, funded some of this. So Chapter 97 would have some restrictions. Did you look into that at all? I did not. Can you explain that a little bit to me? That is so that any time that land is, it needs to be left uh, for public use. And I think that Dave makes a good point that we're, we're and I think I've said this mm -hmm. before where I've I said maybe you can use part of it because the what I understand about Matera Cabin is that it has to be left to the public. It needs to be open for the public use, not only because I believe that um, the Burbanks wanted it that way, but the state put <coughs> some money towards this and asked for that in their in their uh, with their grant of the money. Okay. So, so, so again. The last time we talked, it was one room. Now it's 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 all of it, which I understand. I mean, you have to develop your plan, but um, I would have brought this up to you before so you could look into it if you had mentioned that you were definitely set on the whole thing. I thought place. I had made that clear, that I was just looking to rent the cabin itself, not just a portion of it. Hmm. As if you had, let's just say, for instance, to, um, um, not to minimize what you're doing, but you know you might be doing something that's great, that even as an outreach for people within the community. But you know, let's say if the Cub Scouts wanted to use it for the uh, something something badge, and you were running a something that was a part of your for-profit business, I, I'm not sure whether that would actually jive with the intention of the donation of what the Matera Cabin was donated for. So one of the points. Um, one of the things that I've thought through is um, opening it up for events like scouting, mm -hmm. birthday parties, family events, um, and to do that, as I mentioned, with some kind of a contract that just so that I know I'm protected mm -hmm. or an agreement. Because I don't foresee me going in there, starting something up now where it's used nine to five, seven days a week. I foresee there being a lot of downtime, and I'm flexible with whatever needs to be done to stay within the boundaries and the guidelines. Uh, your description, however, it, it just seems um, I could see how you could build this up to, you know, six, seven days and a lot of, you know, different venues with other, you know, um, people like yourself that you would hire in your business. And I think that would preclude, you know, uh, the use of, of other things that, like the rec department. So unless there was a stipulation that said these X, Y, Z, need to be able to use this how many times a year or um, periodically as they have been and I would be amenable to that. I think the first thing to do is look at the look at how this Matera Cabin conservation area was actually formulated and look at what the deed restrictions are in the passing of the deed and the formulation of the conservation restriction. Because right. so I that think there's, there's probably going to be a lot of legal lease that that's in that transfer of this property that's going to 
give you some kind of guidance as to what this can and can't be used for. Is that public information that I can find out? Yeah. It would should be. be. And I would look particularly in use stipulations yeah. on the on the property. Um, because Yeah. Um, Chuck, did you, have you discussed you've discussed this with Ju Julie and Jean? Um, not formally. Okay. So I didn't get any feedback from them uh, about I just wanted to let them know that this was we were going to be discussing it tonight so I didn't get any formal feedback um, I think that it's, it's a very conceptual plan at this point and to bring something to you know my boss and the assistant town manager I would need uh, and I think I've asked for a business plan or something like that, something to, in writing that ha that we could say this is exactly what we're talking about. And um, so I've written uses. out and printed out a little bit of information on the details of it. I think I missed you when I passed it out to everybody. But if you need um, more than that, I'm happy to provide more. Well, yeah. Let me see, and I'll tell you if we need more than that. Okay. I was just using something for an example. There's been. I mean, is it kind, kind, kind of a is it, is it big just, No, that's not a formal over the last plan. Ten or a dozen years for Memorial Park, and as to how that was used, stand and other parts of the park, and it was, and and they kept on referring back to the deed when that that land was was given, mm -hmm. and because uh, some organized sports teams were using that for practices, and they get thrown off. Yeah, I was aware of that. Because that's that was not part of the deed as as that was being transferred. So it's like, no, 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 you can't like use this. In a similar way, um, it was not Sturgis, but um, maybe it is Sturgis, right next to South Street? Yeah. Like, the, there's a deed stipulation there that it's flooded right. once a year that's for right. people to skate on. Right. right. Yeah. You know, so... So there are these agreements across. Yeah. Um, then I need to do a little bit more homework. Yeah. Just a little bit on what the property use legally allows. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I don't have that off the tip of my tongue. And so. then right. I would ask to, to put down in writing exactly how you're going to use it, the times, what you expect for traffic. Um, you know what you expect to compensate the town for the renovations you're going to Sorry. talk about uh, what you expect to pay the town the cost, uh, <coughs> the renovations that you're going to do I, I would get it all down so that so the town understands what the plan is um, because you know I the, this is great but but this is this is not this doesn't give me enough uh, detail on what you're going to do and the hours of operation and and all that so okay so a little bit more detail more detail hours um, but I again I would look at the, the deed first, first um, before doing any of that because it's also yeah. another consideration too this is also a parking area for people to actually go in and enjoy the bare metal conservation area and right. the, the place that's behind it so if you have clients that are coming into that space and they're going to be parking and taking a parking for the, that parking lot that's there, then that's going to actually reduce the number of parking spaces that the general public can use to utilize that the metal conservation area. So, you know, that's a balance that would have so to be So there struck. is a, a point that I want to mention, um, and that's that at this point in my life, um, I'm looking to keep this a small scale. Um, I, I don't foresee trying to expand to anything elaborate um, and being in the nature of what I'm trying to do, I'm looking to keep any type of a program or a class or service to a maximum of 10 people. Yeah. I just look at you, the second page, the first, first thing, energy works, yoga, dance, fitness, tai chi, zumba, and barry. That's, that's a big, uh, those uh, are, that's a uh, whole thing. Those are a list of a sampling of ideas that I just. Oh, I thought you were looking to do all of those. <laughs> so. I, I would say, you know, that in the beginning, there might be a, a, a dance class two times a week and a fitness class once a week. There might be a music class, a skincare class. 
There might be a book club. In each one of those, you're saying eight to ten people might attend each class. Right. Right. Well, it's definitely interesting. Yeah. It's good. Okay. So, thank you very much for thank hearing you. me and the feedback. And I'll do a little bit more homework and be in touch. So, just to get it straight, the commission uh, is you're you're okay with this moving forward, and you would like some more information. I I think you should look at the deed before you go any further, yeah. because if you can't do it, why waste the time? Right. I, so. I think the biggest concern is is are there legal restrictions to. What are the legal restrictions to how this property is used? Mm -hmm. and, does, and does a temporary lease agreement, if even if the lease agreement, you know, I, if there's many different ways that this potentially could work out. You know, if she has a class, she could ask, she could just schedule it and rent it for those days and those blocks in, in the existing structure as it is, you know. If she wanted to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and just block out those days and say those are, I'd like to rent those days. You know what I mean? Chuck, there's a lot of different ways this could be worked out. I don't so know. So, Ms. Gutierrez, do you, um, is it uh, exclusive or nothing, or uh, would you um, I would entertain? Be open to entertaining other thoughts. Other thoughts, okay. Other possibilities. Well, I just, sure. I mean, I, I see. I think that my biggest concern is that if I'm, trying to operate a business where I'm attracting people, I feel like it needs renovations. And, you know, if I did something like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, what would happens? that prevent me from being able to go in there and make some renovations to the property? You have to, yeah. I mean, with, yeah, obviously with town well. approval, I wouldn't yeah. do anything. You know, that, that, would, that would have to be you know, so that's not something we can answer yeah, here, right? Even, yeah. You know, I don't even know if but that's up to us to decide question. whether you can renovate because the material. To cabin. do some of the things that I want to do, I can't do it with the facility as is. Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. Ain't the right. first big hurdle that you're going to have to cross is utilizing this space as a for-profit entity. I'm Thank sorry. You. Can you repeat Utilizing that? this space as a for-profit entity. Entity. And what I what did you say leading up to that? <laughs> the biggest I think hurdle. the biggest, biggest hurdle. first hurdle that you have to pass. Oh, the biggest okay. and first hurdle you okay. have to pass is to look at the deed restrictions to make certain that okay. a, a for-profit entity, entity cannot utilize the space. In other words, you can't go in and use the space to make money. And I think that is I'm actually flexible with going yeah. nonprofit. I was going to say, you may want to look into that. That may be the key in. I don't right. know. Yeah. Well, and, right. and, we, and I don't know how you... And, uh, well, you're, you're open to those ideas, right? Yeah, so yeah absolutely. Like yeah. Matera, you know, Matera has been used for classes and open free talks, and yep. you know, such a variety of uses from a variety of different. Yeah. But those classes are usually not. Do they pay for those classes? You've been to some of those, right? Um, like the library will rent it for to to start a, a bird walk. Or story walk, or yeah, but they just have people come in from the community to do that. They're not paying, mm -hmm. uh, paying to do that. Recreation sometimes pays vendors to come in and use the cabin and run a class out of oh, the kids cabin. that pay for. Uh, so there are some yeah, recreation are within the school systems. The kids pay for it. Yeah, yeah my children pay did. for it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so recreation runs programs out of there through the summer and through throughout the year, and the hours are better than they can get at the library or the, the school. So that, you're definitely going to have to accommodate them, and I think they're they do later hours. Like yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of there's a lot of information. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of stuff that would have to kind of be worked with, worked out. Um, but you know, explore it. Okay. Thank you. And, yeah, I think the parking is, you'd have to say something about the parking because we'd want to save yeah. some of that for people using bare metal, like um, Mr. Yep. Pennant said. And then what Stipulate would Stipulate that only a certain amount of spaces were to be used for parking. Some Something would have to be oh, yeah. understood about the parking. And, uh, Observed. And consider the wintertime. I mean, DPW plows it. 
I can take some more trees down around there. Oh. Open it up, right? <laughs> the sorry. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the Milton. <laughs> they actually can come down. They're all upland. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> last last spring, they already they already came down. A lot of them by themselves. Yeah. We almost lost the cabin. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So a lot of those yeah. classic. There was a tree right in the center. We have to drive from left to right. That's gone. <laughs> that fell down. Oh, we were lucky. Right. That was that's right. <laughs> Yeah, we, we walk our dog through the trails there frequently. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much. Thank everybody. you. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great Thanks. night. You too. Great. Right. Um, uh, next, are you here for anything? Particular? Yeah, my friend Dan's over in the finance, but you guys are more entertaining, so I came over to say <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> All right. Wow. Pick off those stars right. on the channel. <laughs> I can't tell if that's a joke. Okay. Um, did anybody read that um, two pager from the Ocean River Institute? I did. Yeah, I did. Um, I thought it was very interesting. I, I, uh, it was. The, the first thing I thought after I finished reading it is like, um, I'd kind of like to hear what the other side has to say on this. But you know, I think everything that was said in here, I, you know, they, uh, you know, uh, base a lot of what they're what they're doing, what they're requesting, on what uh, Falmouth has been doing. But uh, you know, uh, as far as the, the. How much you use, how many pounds per acre, and different things like that. Yeah. There's a lot of other variables that actually come into to play here, as you know, far as you know, what's the precipitation, what's this, and so there's a lot of other things that are that are really uh, part of the recipe that would look into what you're going to restrict, and and I couldn't answer that. The other thing is, I I, I think we're just a small audience. I think. Mm. We wouldn't be making this decision anymore. Well, it, it, it encourages the writing of a new bylaw, which would mean forming a committee, drafting a bylaw, going through the process. Um, it's a significant effort. I'm not saying, it's, I mean, it's something to consider. Um, we are the headwaters of three major rivers. Um, major? Well, major. I'll call them major. Well, one of them. Oh, the yeah. Hip switch. And, yeah. You know, we yeah, is really major, is that? Yeah, it's really yeah, major. It gets kind of. Um, <laughs> <so. laughs> Can't do any kayaking there. No. <laughs> no. They become major. They're major to me. <laughs> okay. Um, I, the other thing that I, I, after I read this, is not only I didn't hear the other side of it, and there's a lot of, you know, um, uh, I guess metrics for this that I couldn't determine whether it's good or bad or indifferent. The other thing is that I would also, I guess, turn to the state and see what they say about this as well. The state must have some kind of feeling or some kind of um, insight about changing this or moving in uh, the direction of actually making this perhaps some kind of regulation. So, is, is, so who, who is the, the entity is Ocean River Institute is proposing this? Is that right? And they don't... They, yeah. I they, just kind of... I, I glanced I, at it. I, it was... Yeah, I, I thought some of it was a little confusing myself. Um, <clears throat> It was, it's really geared towards, uh, I felt it was geared towards the ocean mm -hmm. and Falmouth and, you know, they were the coastal so communities that were um, curtailing the use of some of these um, fertilizers. Um, Is there a scheme that all of these rivers end up reading, leading to the oceans? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean... We do have algae blooms and and it seems like quite power and nice to identify algae. Yeah, so I, yeah, I work with a company that used to treat lakes and ponds for um, macrophytes and um, algae. There's my neighbor behind me, so you know, right Longfellow Road. So we have that um, dry or wet little stream there in between, 
and my neighbor behind me actually they're really into the wetland and the frogs and things down there and her and her husband actually measure the water uh, the like out like you know when you test like a fish tank they stick the strip in there and they into the pH yeah and and, it, and they do say and I've only been there for a little over a year now but that they in the spring and, and I, I think it's mostly because now that I, I now that she told me that I drive to work and I see where the manholes are she does say in the spring that it's not like contaminated contaminated but there's definite oil runoff and and, and she thinks there's a neighbor about a half mile up the road that kills their grass with some sort of chemical she thinks and it comes down to the river and uh, so my point is that the, it, this is interesting because she does kind of it interests her she pays attention to that and wonder yeah um i guess that's another part of this bylaw is if we're going to um make it a town or you know start down the path of making it a law that um that there's slow release water insoluble fertilizer and that there's a restriction on to how much um, fertilizer you can use per thousand square feet of lawn you know um, how are we going to enforce that? That's just, 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 just my question. Was how are we going to enforce that? Who's going to be the fertilizer police? <laughs> who's, you know, how do you, how do you <laughs> catch mention, somebody doing it wrong? Everyone in my neighborhood has a yellow and dead lawn. So I, do you know, I was you? reading this thinking, I don't think any of my neighbors even water their lawn or use fertilizer. It's, it's, yeah. I think I, it might be more effective to um, raise public awareness yeah. Yeah. and do, you know, like I read the water, you know, like we, you guys sent over the town sent out the water regulations with right. watering, and I read it. And, you know, I mean, right, and some people some read that and then rat on their neighbors. Yeah, that's I, I, I thought that was pretty loud and clear. Some people like, do <laughs> that, you know. Um, so if you know, if we can educate people in terms of what's beneficial, water protective ways to manage their lawn, well. You know, I'm going to echo what Bill Hecht used to say a while back, was just don't plant grass. <laughs> you know, if you want to go really radical, um, don't plant grass. Get a natural lawn going with a lot of yeah. native species and she a wild good, lawn. She had that good place with the golf in public. Yeah. Well, that's another thing is we have a whole golf I, course I, in I town, don't think you know, I, I mean... I think we can kind of kick this around like a tennis ball all night long, but I don't see us really doing anything substantial tonight with this, so... No. Can no. we move on? Yes. We well, can. no, we did uh, Actually, we were st I don't even understand. I guess you guys wanted to talk about it, but the question was, do we want to invite this guy to talk to us or start a discussion with some other committees to see if we want to get, get uh, if, if you, an if audience for him at the library? Like that, yeah, go... Have have it open to the community yeah. at the library. That's the yeah. perfect place for it. Oh, that's a wonderful place for it. It's, it's not. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure here, but yeah, at the library, that would be great. Yeah. Could do a lot of that stuff. Okay, let's move the, on. The golf course is interesting, though. Have it at the golf course because of the the, the yeah. sheer size. Mm -hmm. I don't think reading this. Let's see if the golf course wants to host. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they'd love to do that, Curtin. No, I <laughs> Fertilizes. Okay, I'm hearing not much interest. Okay. Okay, um, wetland restoration report, Belmont Street to Ivy Street. We did go out and take a look at that. We did. And it was the Belmont this, uh, side. This thing is, this thing is nice. Yep. I don't have pictures of the Belmont side. This is the Ivy side. Um, it looks really nice. I told them they need to take their DEP sign down, and the Belmont side had leaves on the leaves on the bag and, and sticks in the stream. St oh, Not sticks, a, but they were like a little log logs. to get across the stream. Someone had cut up some branches and thrown them in there, which seems. Doesn't seem too <laughs> too good because that's going to just like you know, jam up the stream and it's going to start flooding. But, um, 
so we, I let the DPW know, and they haven't submitted an order of uh, certificate of compliance for this project yet, but at least we know where they're at when it does come in. A little bit of cleanup. Um, that slope needs to be looked at to see if it can get vegetated again. We actually are getting right back into the growing season, um, so maybe something can be done prior to, you know, November. Let's see what can happen. Uh, I, what I think happened was um, the neighbors are using that open space, that bank, to sweep their leaves into because there was there was a lot there, and it wasn't natural leaf litter. Nope. Yeah. So in that situation, what you sent the you send the neighbors a letter? No, in this situation, it's the responsibility of the DPW to um, vegetate the bank and. They are going to probably end up taking a lot of leaves out when they do that. Well, my so I, I'm just going to suggest, and you know, it's not a lot. It's, it's just some. Right, but if it's the beginning of a trend that continues after DPW does the clean out, you know, it might be good to just let those neighbors, let those residents know. We noticed this. If it was you, we're going to ask you to stop. Yeah. We know it was you. <laughs> Just go right to the start. We know I think I, okay, yeah, that I you know I get it. I don't think my time to send the letter is now because I'm actually sending the yeah. DPW out there and telling them to clean up somebody else's mess. So I'm sure yeah. they're gonna make a big point out of that to those people and then if it happens yeah. again. You would hope. And we're also asking for a sign that says no dumping there. Yeah. So All right. So I, I think a sign the process the is in place. Hopefully, it stops. This, you know, we do have that great compost area um, to bring all the trash is and all the yard waste to. Random. Like I use the the, the dump weekly or a couple times a month, really. If it was open, one more day. No, really. I mean, Saturday in the. Used I mean, to be. Uh, really? Because it used to be open. It's every like Sunday. mind boggling that it's closed when yeah. any human being could actually go They're there. They're looking for someone to. I, I think I think that's um, one of the programs that the town offers for someone to be them, one of the volunteers, oh. the tax program, uh, to be there. They do that for uh, Monday. Well, sometimes the year they do it Monday and Friday. Monitor. You should. And, uh, yeah. yeah. And they give. Uh, um, it's. Uh, usually uh, elderly people and they they give them tax breaks a break on the really? taxes for yes. working down the yep. couple center what? but that used to be open every Sunday and for well, 35 years Saturday was always a work day for me so well, when they started uh, yeah. closing on Sunday and then it's I like Monday, go. and I'm, everyone's at work. I don't understand. That's what I mean. so, so I guess my point was to relieve some of the thing. I wonder if there's any one percent more people would go there and dump right. their trash barrel of leaves right. if it was the schedule was better. one bit more accommodating. Than no, the ones that dump, <laughs> they've been doing it a not. long time. It's discouraging. All right. Um, National Grid Tower Painting Utility Maintenance Work. That looks pretty straightforward. Do you want to call me out there, Chuck? Chuck on it. <laughs> you know, I would have um, if I had time, yeah. I, I don't think I've ever been doing? out there. But I know Becky and no Rebecca. Uh, Becky yeah, and we'll Nico are supposed winter. to go out there. Yeah. We'll check it this winter. No. The dog. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Augusta Court, uh, Jacobs Way, this is uh, Reading Woods. They're looking to submit a certificate of compliance application. I met with an engineer out at the site who is going to fulfill our request to put some more bounds to make it more noticeable. The bounds around the tree are on the plan as they're shown on the ground they have nothing to do with the wetland it's uh, it's a no touch area so <laughs> was that was established with, with the other conservation commission with with uh, the yeah with another con conservation commission um, they're way outside so we tried to leave the bonds in place that were there but place other ones that that continued that right. line and brought it right back into the 25 foot zone so because what, what do we have now? Now that it just turns into a no touch zone, so we tried to establish this no touch zone. Now I don't think I would have done it this way, but um, 
you know, it was a lot more work to take things out, and plus it was in an old order of conditions. So they were going to do that, and they were going to reestablish some, some um, vegetation in the rain gardens, which was probably 85, 90% vegetated and, and nicely vegetated. Uh, the last couple of times I'd been there, it, w it w didn't look like that, but it, everything grew in this year. What about the woody vegetation and the retention pond? Yeah, the retention They're going to take that out. They're going to have someone go in and take that out. So that was part of my request. Um, <coughs> and he, this engineer said there, you know, in the transition I got a little pushback between, you know, the, the, the association is supposed to take over, we're really closing down. And I said, well, they probably want to get it in a way that uh, it's, it's, you know, it meets the qualifications of a detention pond, and that's no video woody vegetation, so they'll know what to do in the future. So uh, he agreed, so they're going to take out some of the, the plant material. I think it was sumac, wasn't it? Sumac. Yeah, it was sumac, sumac there, sumac. yeah. yeah. And, a, um, and a, uh, what do they call it? The trees from down Florida. Mimosa. Mimosa. Mimosa trees sitting in the middle of it. <laughs> Not too long ago, we have a good winter. No. <laughs> I encouraged him to look at our uh, tree policy for uh, way back when this project started before. That's Building 7 right there where all the wetlands are and the tree and everything we're talking about. That's Building 7. So when they started Building 7, uh, there was a very energetic young uh, machine operator that clear-cut everything all the way down to some of those um, weeping willow trees and that was a violation. So in order not to get into a violation, what they did is they said they would plant some plants. So these plants have never taken off. They've never established themselves. They just died off. So they were going to call in um, New England Environmental to uh, take another look, develop a plan, and do some planting again. I, I encouraged the engineer to um, look into our tree policy and see if there was something else that he could do based on the tree policy, whether he wants to, again, do the shade tree donation or plant somewhere else because inside that area it doesn't seem to be, uh, it's, it's like accepting one one of the plants, um, I can't remember the name of it, but one of them's growing and it, 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 it's, it's not really established. I mean, that's highway runoff, so it's pretty toxic. And... Um, it's, it's probably oily, it's you know toxic like oily and brake break dust and things like that. So things aren't establishing themselves in this very wet, 80% of the time wet area. And that's where they were planting. <coughs> Arcadia. Arcadia Ave, uh, on Monday we finalized uh, what we thought was a great uh, application for the conservation restriction. It has gone to the state. We're just waiting for a CR number and, um, and it for it to be posted on the website. So that should happen soon. So is that, that part A of the process? Pretty much to, it's, <coughs> it, it kind of got confusing where it ended and stopped because we got so much done with this application and we had the plans already, we just sent it in. And I think that was all of A up to where the state reviews. Mm. So we would be waiting for their comments as they're building this project. So at this point, are we able to, have they met what we asked them to do? Yes, they certainly did. Well, no. They met what they asked us to do in the application. We need that file number. So proof that it went to the state. Okay. All right. Once that happens, then we can... Yeah, we're all set. We can let them get the building permit? Yeah. Okay. Uh, emergency permits, none. Bills, none. Minutes, none. Okay. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Meeting is adjourned.